Hi everyone, so this is Jackson Subedi and I'm recording this video today uh, to uh, let you know how to set up a Zoom meeting so that you are not like your participants are not prompted for a password. This is very important because many a times uh, you set up a, uh, a classroom, let's say you are giving uh, online classes and you want students to, to join and if the students are of young age and then uh, they would like to join your classroom every day in a fixed or uh, not fixed timing maybe uh, today is uh, let's say Tuesday it's 10 o'clock Wednesday maybe 12 uh, on Thursday it might be scheduled for uh, for 2 p.m. or it, it may it may vary so if you want student to enter into your classroom uh, without needing a password then it will be much more easy for the students and for you as well so that you don't have to give passwords all the time uh, you do have an option to come up with uh, a fixed password but again why to give password when you can do it with your meeting ID only so let's uh, let me go through a quick setup so this is a zoom uh, zoom app that you have downloaded it's a desktop zoom app and then this app has a very little function if you can see it here uh, there are very little function so what I want to do is we would like to set up uh, meeting in such a way that no uh, passwords uh, required to enter into your classroom or your meeting room. So let's go to general. In general, you'll have at the bottom, you'll see this uh, view more settings. So you just want to click on that and exit this window. So you will be prompted to uh, sign in with your Zoom account. So whatever account you use to run your uh, Zoom meetings, you just go and then uh, sign up. So let me uh, let me go and quickly sign up through Google. And then uh, let's see what will be the next page that'll be uh, that will come. Okay, after you sign in, this is the page uh, which comes after you sign in. So there is profile, meetings, webinar, recordings, and settings on your left hand side. So just go to settings first, and you can stay on this first tab here, which it says meeting. So now just follow whatever it's there you can turn on and off so host video it's me so I will you can turn this on so that uh, students will see you and then will recognize that oh this is my science teacher or uh, or social studies teacher math teacher whatever it is uh, and then participants video you can turn this on so that you can see your uh, students go down and then audio type you can just select computer audio because telephone is no more working so uh, with zoom it's not working so computer audio zoom has stopped a telephone or uh, these two functions so you can just select computer audio or you can leave it on telephone and computer audio join before host you can allow them to join before host or you can turn that off no no problem at all use meeting id when scheduling the meeting you have to turn this on this one also here on only authenticate, authenticated users can join meetings from web client. You can turn this on. Require a password. So this, you should turn it off. Require a password, turn it off. Require a password, turn it off. Embed password in meeting link and this and that, so turn it off. Require password for participants joining by phone, turn it off. So wherever it says require password, just turn it off to be on the safe side. Uh, mute participants upon entry of course it is a must when you are uh, running a class when you are explaining something you don't want people to come in and then uh, disturb you with their audio sounds uh, upcoming meeting reminder you can turn this on and off depending upon your requirement and then go down chat you want to chat with your students uh, private chat should be on auto saving chat you can if you want to save the chat if you do lots of your classes and uh, if you think the chats are important then you can turn this on otherwise you can turn that off play sound when participant join and leave you can turn this on and make sure you only hear the sound so heard by host only or you can turn this off so that you don't care students go off and on due to the internet connections or or whatever is the reason you can turn this off file transfer uh if you do not 
transfer your files as in classwork or homework through Zoom and you use alternate platform like you email to your all students or you put your files, you put your classwork and homework or assignment in your Google Classroom, then you can turn this off. You have to turn this off because of the security reason so that uh, the hackers and others don't get into your meeting room and transfer uh, spams uh, to all your attendees. So that will be a very uh, uh, disrespect. So uh, that's why you can turn this off. Uh, feedback to Zoom. You can turn this on if you want to give uh, you provide feedback to Zoom. This uh, should be off. Always show meeting toolbar. So you can turn this on or you can turn this off if you're not you don't use the toolbar that much you can turn this off uh, so zoom windows during screen share i'll turn this on to myself zoom windows during uh, screen share so you can turn this on or off uh, i'll turn it on so screen sharing very important you can turn this on and if you don't want your participants to share their screen and go berserk when you are hosting and then you're sharing your screen your participants are sharing and then so just turn this as host only. You will have an option within the meeting room to turn this uh, to give give an opportunity for your participants to uh, also share their screen. So you will have an uh, in within the meeting window. You'll have that option. I might show you that later in this video. Disable desktop screen share users for uh, screen share for users. Uh, disable desktop as you are only sharing your screen, so this is automatically disabled. You can turn this on if you want to see the desktop of your users of your participants. Annotations: If you don't want your students to, let's say, one incident happened uh, recently that when one of the teacher was showing a picture and explaining things, there were students drawing mustaches and beard on that picture, which is very annoying. So you can, you may want to turn this off for now. If you want them to write on your whiteboard or write on the screen, then you can turn this on. That that is an in-meeting feature. When while you are doing the meeting, you can turn that on later. But I will show you in a while. Whiteboard, obviously, you can turn this on and save the whiteboard if the content is important. If the content is not important, then you can uh, you can uncheck this as well. Remote control, turn this off, 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 and all participants to rename themselves. Turn this on because you ask them to write their real name so that you can identify them as your student. They don't come up with other uh, fancy names. So in meeting, these are all off. Virtual background, if you're using it, you can turn it on. Otherwise, you can turn it off if you're not using it. And everything else is off unless waiting room. So you want your students to wait for you. Uh, come a little early, test their, test their microphone, test their speakers, and then wait. be ready for the class and wait. So this has to be turned on. And then email notification, if you don't want each and every student, this might be annoying for a few people. It's annoying for me that I don't want each and every email coming in when there are students joining for waiting for the class, joining before than me, uh, before uh, before me, and then waiting for my class to start, and then you get bombarded emails when everyone uh, joins in. So you can turn this off. And also, when meeting is cancelled, you may cancel or may not cancel the meeting. When it's cancelled, it's it is sent to you and all the participants. So I think this is very helpful. So you can turn this on. Other than that, don't worry about other features. Leave it. You don't need to save it. It's auto sa saved. So this is uh, this is just one setting that we have done. We also need to do other settings as well. Let's go to uh, the profile page and see how we can set it up. Okay, in this profile page, you will see your meeting ID at the top, and then you will see this. Use this ID for instant meeting. So you make sure you have clicked this one. You can click edit at the side, and then check this one. This is my sign-in email, and then uh, then I'm using a free account. So it's basic where we have a participants of uh, limited to hundred people, and then this is nothing to do much except you can just go and select this this option. And now let's go to another tab, another tab, which is meeting tab here. So meetings, you can just go here. Uh, I saw that even if you are good with this setting here, the profile settings, it may not work as there is something that you need to uncheck. So let's try and create one 
uh, meeting. So just to ensure that everything is working fine. So let me show you when I schedule a new meeting. Let's schedule a new meeting here. Okay, to schedule a new meeting, I move one box so that it hides my ID here. So uh, this is, oops, sorry, okay. So here, topic, whatever topic you want, whatever description you want, when, you just put your date uh, and the timings, just for an example, this does not have to be a scheduled meeting. And then duration, just to put it one hour or whatever it is. Now, I'm putting this box here to just hide my personal ID so that uh, it's my meeting does not get bombarded uh, with other, other unnecessary people. So you have to click this here. So click this recurring meeting and how I will show you how it looks. Okay, after you click on recurring meeting, you'll be uh, prompted with these features. What makes sure you don't have this one clicked here, meeting password. So if you have some password here, so that is why you are being requested with passwords again and again. So just uncheck this. And then in this recurring meeting, you just go to recurrence and put no fixed time. All right? And other than that, uh, video host and participant on, on, audio it's it's uh, computer audio right and then meeting room enable join before host you can do that mute participants upon entry enable waiting room and if you want to record your meeting automatically on your local computer you can check this or you will have a feature to record uh, your meeting anyway in, in the mean uh, in the meeting applications so you can save this and let me go to let me start the meeting and then show you how it looks Okay, let's see this. This is the meeting room. So I will go and uh, quickly get into the meeting. Okay, I have started a meeting here. So this is a meeting room. I've not turned on my video. So I'll show you one, uh, like few options here. So share, like when you are sharing your screen, you want other participants to share their, uh, share their screen, then you have to click this option so that they can share. Otherwise, only you will be sharing at the moment. And then next feature is when you click chat, you don't have an option to send a file here. Otherwise, we turn that off. So file transfer is not here. Uh, next next option that you would like to know is when you are sharing a screen for example let me share let me share a whiteboard uh, when I'm sharing a whiteboard this is how it looks and then you can go here and ask disable attendee annotation so if you don't want others to start drawing mustaches and beard then you have to disable this right so as you can start uh, writing you can write here right like if you're good in writing or if you have a digital pad then it will be easy if you can write it through your you can connect your iPads or iPhones and then start writing there then uh, it will look good otherwise you have always have an option to write uh, write with uh, with uh, text like say text tool but text tool or whatever it is and then uh, you can delete this and do whatever you want to do this is a very good handy feature other than that i don't think uh obviously we have allowed uh, meeting room and participants when they join they will be they will be joining in and then you will be prompted to admit them uh, as a participant and then you can admit click admit and then they will come into your uh, room otherwise even if they are not prompted with password you will get an option to admit them into your meeting room you don't you will not have random people getting into your uh, classroom or your meeting room so that's it i think this much will be very much helpful for you to start scheduling a meeting or start an instant meeting and allow participants to come in without requiring a password just your meeting ID permanent meeting ID or personal meeting ID will be enough to get into your meeting room thank you very much uh, I'll come up with the next video if required thank you bye bye